this. So I see people joining. It's good to see everyone and good to see you, Dr. Guarneri. Let me do a, a formal introduction so everybody kind of knows what Dr. Guarneri brings to the table, and it's a lot. Uh, Mimi Guarneri is an integrative cardiologist focusing, focusing on disease prevention and health creation. She established the Scripps Center for Integrative Health, where she served as the medical director for 15 years before she co-founded the Guarneri Integrative Health um, at Pacific Pearl La Jolla, which is where I came to know her. Um, I was a member of her practice, and uh, I still consult her on, on an ongoing basis for lots of things, and she's amazing. She's written three books. She's hosted a public television series called Live Better Now. She knows everything about the heart. She knows everything about integrative medicine and sort of the connection between mind, body, and spirit. And I think that's really needed in the medical system right now and the way that we're living. And obviously, in light of what's happening with COVID and uh, the way people are feeling about life. So Dr. Guarneri, it's good to, good to have you. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you for the kind introduction. And um, let's start out by talking about from a medical perspective. Um, most of us probably, if we're fortunate, we haven't walked into a hospital, we haven't seen um, a healthcare provider. We don't know kind of what's happening on your end. Tell us a little bit about what, you, what you've been seeing, what you've been doing, and what you've been learning um, over the last couple of months. Well, over at Pacific Pearl La Jolla in my private practice, we've been focusing on antibody testing now for a number of weeks. And we were one of the early adapters uh, using the Vibrant Health technology. Uh, as part of a research study, we began to realize that people who had an illness, let's say in December mm -hmm. or January, where they said, oh, I was so sick, I had such a bad bronchitis, never sick like that in my life. That seems to be the the unifying themes, we're finding that those people actually have immunity to COVID-19. Uh, okay. So we know that it's at least been in our San Diego community at least as early as December. Okay, and so I, I'm one of those people that I felt in February, and I live in the Bay Area, I felt I was really sick, um, not super sick, but more sick than I had been in a long time, and I just felt off for a really long time. Should I, at this point, assume that that was COVID? And maybe what can I do as a result? No, I wouldn't assume it's COVID. I mean, you're still entitled to have a viral illness. You know, I mean, we have many people right now with viral illnesses of different types, things going on, strep throat. And everybody, of course, thinks they have COVID until yeah. we <laughs> test them. Yes. Uh, no, so if you, you really have that question, I think it's important to have an antibody test done. Uh, and you want to do a test that not only checks one of the domains of the virus, for example, we're testing four domains of the virus, mm -hmm. so that we can see if you actually have some form of immunity. Now, you will hear on the news over and over, Dr. Fauci in particular, saying, we don't know how good this immunity is, right? So. Right. Well, some of us, when we were young, we, some people had measles, for example, and immunity to measles is good for life. Whereas if I go and get a tetanus vaccine, that immunity is probably good for 10 years. We don't know the answer to this, but if you do have IgG, mm -hmm. which implies that you have some immunity to this virus, uh, one, you may, you may have a little bit of protection and mm -hmm. two, you may be able to be a, a donor for your immunoglobulins so that you can help someone else who's in crisis. So I guess that that is kind of related to the, the next logical question. So if I think that I might have had it, where do I go and um, what, what, what do I gain from, from going through that? Right. So what you gain, uh, first of all, where do you go? Uh, many labs are now coming on board with testing. Uh, even LabCorp right now um, has some level of immune testing, Cleveland Heart Lab. We have been using Vibrant Health as part of a research study. So you need to check around for your labs, uh, good labs not uh, that are doing antibody testing. If you find that you have antibodies, I don't want to come off this program with people thinking, oh, okay, I'm fine. I can right. go into crowds. Uh, but there is a level of protection that you probably do have if you potentially get exposed again to this virus. Uh, and we're, we're not sure yet in healthcare how long that is good for, mm -hmm. but we're hoping that we get what we call herd immunity. 
Uh, and herd immunity is going to be really important. And that simply means enough people in our community have been almost naturally vaccinated by virtue of having had the virus, that they have antibodies, the late antibodies, mm -hmm. to protect them. And if we get enough people with herd immunity, it's sort of like, I like to think of the analogy of a matchstick lined up, right? So if you have a matchstick and you go from, the, and the flame jumps from stick to stick to stick, mm -hmm. if you pull one of those sticks out, all of a sudden the flame can't keep going. Right. And so the herd immunity is like pulling that stick out. A vaccination is like pulling that person out of the line so it stops there. Yes. And, and that's the big hope that we will eventually uh, get enough. So what, I, what is also necessary? So uh, we need to do these antibody testing. Are the tests good enough? I mean, you said you're testing, you have like four different levels of tests. I've read that some of the other tests are not as comprehensive and then as a result, they're not as, um, they don't seem, they seem to have more errors. How do we know, how do we know, you know, where to get the best test and whether we have the best test, if, if that's even available right now? I suspect that people will have a few different kinds of tests along the way. You have to remember everything is moving very quickly. We've mm -hmm. never really had a time like this, in, at least in our lifetime, where we say, let's get testing up overnight. Let's not wait for FDA approval. Let's do what we can do. Same is true with the treatments for COVID-19 right now, remdesivir and so on. It's let's try, let's see, let's study. Uh, but right now there are some uh, good labs, you know, LabCorp being one that is offering some testing. Uh, Vibrant Health is offering testing. People can go to the website and take a look. Uh, what I have found is I'm trying to correlate the testing, the results that I'm seeing with the clinical side. I do, I do see people coming back that were asymptomatic. I do see some component of that. Now, I can't tell you that they weren't exposed to a different type of coronavirus. You know, there are different types. Cannot tell you that for certain. Uh, but what I'm seeing is a real correlation between, oh, gee, I was, my whole family was so sick. I'll give you a, a family in my practice. We went on our Hawaii vacation. We got so sick. We were just down and out for 10 days all of them tested positive for the antibody. So mm -hmm. I can correlate and say, okay, I feel pretty comfortable saying, given that you had fever and you had chills and you had all these things going on, I feel pretty comfortable saying that you had COVID-19. What about, let's talk about, you mentioned the treatments um, and the potential for a vaccine. Tell us what you're seeing from the medical perspective and what you're hearing and, and the timeline for that. Yeah, so the good news is the entire world is involved. And that's, you know, the one thing that COVID-19 has taught all of us is we're all breathing the same air, right? Mm -hmm. We're yeah. all, you know, the, the planet is our country. We live on planet Earth. That's yes. our country. Uh, and we're all, uh, and every human being is what you breathe out, I'm breathing in and so mm -hmm. on. And so it's really taught us that we're all in this together. And many of us in ecological medicine for years have talked about the web of life and how it's all connected and how mm -hmm. we're all connected. But it's very easy to say, oh, Ebola, that's their problem. That, oh, that's an Africa problem. That's not our problem. And COVID-19 has taught us that all of this Absolutely. is all of all of our problem uh, and, and challenge. So everyone is working on a vaccine. Millions and millions of dollars are being put into uh, vaccine research right now. There are some vaccines that are being tested in chimpanzees and humans, you know, usually starts with mice, chimpanzees, humans, and so on. Uh, so I feel, and this virus actually lends itself kind of nice to a vaccine mm -hmm. because it has wow. that M spike and there are things you can target. So, and there are different, couple of different targets you can go for. So I feel confident that we will have a vaccine. But in the meantime, what I'm telling everyone is please let's give our, our scientists, our doctors, our people on the front line who are exhausted, especially my colleagues in New York, they are yeah. just exhausted and wiped out beyond imagination. Let's give them a chance to recover. And how do we do that? We do that by 
doing our own homework, practicing our own social distancing, washing our hands, you know, doing the things that we can do uh, to avoid staying out of the emergency room. Yeah, those are, those are great points. Um, and just to let people are, know who are watching, Dr. Granary is happy to take your questions. So feel free to um, chime them in and we can ask them of her. Um, there is a lot of controversy now about staying at home. Um, I saw just around the corner from you in Pacific Beach, a lot of protesters. Um, from a medical perspective, is that is that the point? Um, that by staying at home, we're giving the scientists and the researchers and the drug trials more time. Um, there's also a lot to be said for getting fresh air, having you know good mental health, good physical health, that also creates immunity. Um, where do you fall in between in terms of the balance? I think everyone needs to be out getting fresh air. I mean, there's no reason you can't go out and walk and hike and be out in nature. I think that's one of the best things you can do for your immune system. Getting a good night's sleep is a great thing for the immune system. Eating, yes. uh, laying off the alcohol and eating lots of phytonutrients. All these things are good for the immune system. Uh, it's very interesting. No one knows the answer. Uh, in Sweden, for example, they're doing the experiment a little bit differently. In Sweden, they're letting their herd immunity come up. They're, they're, they actually are not uh, having people isolate at home, uh, but they are protecting those people that are more vulnerable, the, the elderly, people with uh, comorbid conditions. When you look at who's really dying, it's a lot of people in nursing homes and so on. Right. Um, that's not to say we should all go out and, and be in crowds and be on top of each other and so on. Uh, so there's different, it's a controversy right now. It's the balance between, hey, I'm healthy, so what? If I get this, I'm going to be fine. Uh, but yet the scary part to that is we're seeing perfectly so-called healthy people get into really deep trouble. So again, I think we don't know the answer. Is, is it good to let some aspect of the community get sick, bring those people back into the workforce, put them on the front line because they have immunoglobulins, we can test and know. Uh, we don't know the answer yet to that, but I think as responsible human beings in general, right? Yeah. What, did we, what did we see during COVID-19? We saw influenza drop, right? Yeah. All of a sudden, influenza went away. Why did influenza go away? People are washing their hands. People, <laughs> people are covering their face. They're being mindful uh, of what, what they're, that they're not exposing themselves to someone else to virus. And I think in many ways, that's just good practice. That's just good hygiene. So we'll just have to wait and see uh, how, how the Swedish experiment uh, ends up. And we just got a, a question from um, Manny, and he's asking, um, going back to, he, he might have not have um, heard what we talked about, about the antibody tests. Um, are the antibody tests, are they blood tests? Are there tests, are there any tests that you feel are reliable that if somebody wanted to go out there and they can ask for it by name, what is the name that they need to ask for? Right, so they want a serology test. There are a few labs now that are getting FDA approval for a little finger prick. I would say uh, what I'm seeing in my practice is a good old fashioned blood drawer serology test that looks for a couple of different antibodies. And just for the viewers uh, who may not be familiar with immunology, when you first have an infection, let's say you have mono or you have um, cytomegalovirus or herpes virus, your body will respond by producing an antibody called IgM, M as in Mary. That's your early antibody. So when we say IgM, we say, okay, you've had an exposure that's relatively recent. Can't tell you exactly how recent unless I have a clinical scenario that goes with it. Over time, the healthy immune system will begin to produce a late antibody called IgG. G is in George. So that's your late antibody, which is your protective antibody. And so I think if I think it'd be great for everyone to get antibody testing. You know, in the beginning, I was only testing people who said, you know, I I had this really bad infection and I thought it was COVID, so I confirmed it with antibody testing. Now I'm saying we should all know our antibody status because uh, like I'm negative. I have no antibodies to this. 
So I can tell you that keeps me a little bit more on my toes. Yes, absolutely. Right? Yes. Uh, uh, wearing my face mask and gloves if I go in a supermarket and so on. Uh, and not that we should let down our guard, even if we have antibodies, but it would be that would be a nice thing to know because then we can say 50% of the population has antibodies. That produces the rest of us are at less risk. Whereas if only 10% of the population has antibodies, we're going to see this thing again and again. Yeah, that's interesting because we focus so much on the vaccine, but it sounds like the antibody test is actually even more important. That, I mean, a vaccine is important, but the antibody test is just as important to do in lockstep because we have a sense for how big the problem is and how contained the problem is. Um, so uh, if you think about it, so that's a great suggestion. Is any of this covered by insurance? What is the cost? Like, you know, that that's, is it prohibitive right now? No, I think uh, you have to look at what your insurance policy is. As you know, in the United States, this is this is a dilemma we have. Everybody has different insurance policies. Many people don't have insurance because they're out of work. Yes. Uh, I think the bigger question is how do we revamp the entire healthcare system, mm -hmm. which financially is close to collapsing, uh, not to frighten anyone, but it really is. Uh, and so I think the, the, the question is, can you give a call to a lab core and say, will you take my insurance or would you, uh, or how much would it cost over at our center? It costs $250, which okay. for some people is prohibitive for other people. They say, I'm going to invest in that. Yeah. Right? Um, and speaking of the changes to the medical system, what are you hopeful? What are you seeing in terms of infrastructure change in, in terms of political changes, in terms of just a different way of accessing medical care, of providing medical care and the interaction between the two? Right. So I think you see we have no safety net for our country. Mm -hmm. Right. We have people we have millions of people with absolutely no insurance and no access to health care. We have people who stay home and have heart attacks because they have no access to health care. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to wake up to the economics of the health care system and the way we're doing business. And uh, Don Berwick did a great um, synopsis last night on one of the news channels, really talking about how, uh, you know, most hospitals make their money by doing things to people. And, yeah. right, and right now, all the elective things, all the, oh, gee, um, I, I need to have even a surgery for cancer or skin cancer. Everything is on hold, colonoscopies, all of that. So that's the bread and butter money for hospitals. And so they are down over 50 percent. Uh, so at the end of the day, I think uh, I'm a proponent of coverage for everyone, especially uh, all of our children that don't have health coverage. I think everyone needs basic health coverage in the United States of America. And we are the only developed country that doesn't see it that way. And yes. I believe that a lot of that is, is about greed. So that's a big paradigm shift to provide universal basic healthcare access. And it may or may not happen with the political climate that depending upon what happens in the election and whatnot. So in like, I guess, with that as an ultimate goal, what are things that are, is, are making you optimistic or hopeful that are starting to see sort of the tectonic plates shift um, that you think could create an opening for that? I think the opening is uh, the system is going to implode. And even if the government puts billions of dollars into the healthcare system, it, it, this is only until the next pandemic, right? Or right. to the next medical crisis. So there is talk right now about having, you know, extending Medicare to people 55 and older. There's talk right now about covering all children. I think uh, linking healthcare coverage to your employer, that's a real big mistake. Because if I lose my job, yeah. I lose my health care coverage. And people say, oh, you could go on COBRA. That's thousands of dollars a month. When you lose your job, you're not going on COBRA. We have to be realistic here. Mm -hmm. So I think it's exposing uh, all of the issues that we have uh, re around health care today, which is, one, we don't focus on prevention. So you, right. want, you want to prevent COVID-19, you get everyone's immune system good and strong. How do you get the immune system good and strong? You get people eating right. 
you, you know, you, the research is showing it's people that are obese. It's people that have bad diabetes. These are the people that are dying, right? Mm -hmm. People who haven't had quality access to health care, like African-Americans who have the highest death rate. It's not because they're African-American. I can almost guarantee you that. It's because there's more hypertension, there's more diabetes, there's more comorbid conditions that haven't been treated because people haven't had health care. Right, access, yep. We have a question, Dr. Guarneri. Um, if uh, one of the viewers asked, if I tested positive for IgM but not IgG, do I have a level of protection against COVID? You will. You probably will. If you have IgM, it's only a matter of time before you get to IgG. If you have IgM and you're absolutely asymptomatic, uh, there's a chance that somewhere along the line you were exposed and you may have been exposed to another coronavirus. I don't, nobody knows the answer to that, mm -hmm. uh, but there's a good chance with a healthy immune system, you will develop IgG and then you have the opportunity, if you would like, to be an immunoglobulin donor if we it, you know, uh, and be in that pool that can actually help people. Uh, if you have symptoms and you have IgM, you really should go get a PCR. That's the test where they put the nasal swab deep up into the nose and look for active virus. So there's a test for active virus, and then there's the antibody test. And uh, these are two completely different tests. Anyone who's having active symptoms uh, before we had, we had no testing. That's why we were telling people, stay home, self uh, isolate, go in a room, you know, don't be around your family members because we didn't have the testing available. We had nowhere to send anyone. So uh, you probably will have some aspect of immunity with the IgM and you probably will develop more. So you may want to retest in about six weeks to see if you have IgM, uh, IgG, if you currently have IgM. Are there any cases of false negatives that you're seeing with these antibody tests? You know, there's always the possibility, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always a possibility. And we always look at something called sensitivity and specificity of testing. And we try to get those numbers as high as we can. And again, that's where you say, uh, what does the clinical situation look like? And then what does the antibody testing look like? I have to say of the patients I've had, and I've tested close to 100 people now, um, somewhere heading in that range, that um, it's co correlating with what the news is telling us, 25% of people asymptomatic, um, right? Yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know I had anything. And yeah, I have these antibodies. And again, I don't know which coronavirus they had, but, uh, those that have been sick, the IgMs are really correlating. Um, as we, some communities across the across the country are returning back to, you know, they're not sheltering. Their bowling alleys are starting to open. Things are returning to quote unquote normal. Um, how are you worried about a second wave? And how can we protect ourselves um, and boost our immunity? Right. So I'm definitely worried about a second wave. I will say that as long as we don't have our herd immunity, as long as we don't have enough people with immunity to protect the rest of us who don't have immunity, we will see a second wave. And it's going to be up to us to uh, lay back and say, I'm not going to do those things that are going to put me at risk. Mm -hmm. uh, and what, how hard is it for people if you're going into a crowd to wear a face mask? How hard is it if you're going to into a shopping uh, supermarket to wear gloves and a face mask. I mean, that's not a lot to ask of people to do. How, you know, washing your hands, you know, all of the, all of the things that we've been talking about. And then looking at your own uh, lifestyle habits, right? Like you said, let's go out and let's walk in nature. Let's get to our ideal body weight because we know that the more weight we carry, the more impact that has on the immune system. Mm -hmm. Let's get sleeping at night, right? Let's uh, start eating lots of green vegetables and, and fruits that are pigmented like berries and so on. Uh, so let's really get rid of the cookies, cakes, candy, ice cream. <laughs> let's get a good night's sleep. Let's get walking. And I think uh, very importantly, turn the bloody news off. And I, I know you're a news person. Yes. <laughs> It's hard, yes. <laughs> right? And people have it playing 24-7 as background noise. And all you hear all day is breaking news, this, this many deaths, that many deaths. What research has shown us 
is that when people watch certain types of movies, it affects the lining of their blood vessel, their endothelium. Mm -hmm. It affects their immune system. So uh, at the end of the day, get your news 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, not all day long, and try to do things that bring you joy. Like I'm encouraging all my patients to watch funny movies. If you're going to be in front of the TV, make it a funny movie because we know that boosts the immune system. Uh, you know, laughter is good medicine and it's not just a saying, it's reality. Uh, get away from the news and do a puzzle. I'm encouraging all my patients, throw a puzzle out on the table and, you know, have the whole family get involved in that. Go out and take a walk together. Yeah. You know, there are plenty of things that we can do. Uh, we're not hearing negative uh, negative stuff all night long because you know this, if you're sitting and watching all day long this kind of information, you're gonna walk away from that TV and think you're sick. You're oh, gonna, your, your, your whole psyche changes, right? Yeah. Yes. And, and, and what's going on subconsciously is what you think about expands. That's what, we, you know, in metaphysics, we say what you think about expands and what are you thinking about, right? Are you thinking yes. about, so I want people to put what brings them joy? That's what I want them to do. I want them to think about things that they see themselves doing in the future. I'm going to be on a trip to Italy. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to be on my boat at the beach, whatever, as opposed to all this doom and gloom. And that's why I love being your patient, Dr. Gunnery. <laughs> you were the, one of the first practitioners that ever told me, gave me the permission and gave me the prescription for, for joy and dealing with emotions because uh, you know that it has an effect on the body just as much as an effect on our, on our feelings and our emotions. We have a question. Before there was a COVID test, would people with the virus have tested positive for the flu? No, no. Influenza A and influenza B are completely different tests, right? So, uh, and we saw this. We saw people going in with what looked like flu and they were really sick and their, and their flu test came back negative. And now we're thinking, oh my goodness, they probably had COVID. Just like one of my colleagues um, uh, who works with me, a, a, another physician, internist, he was so sick in December mm -hmm. and he had had his flu vaccine. And of course, you know, people say, well, well, maybe the flu vaccine didn't work, right? But now when we were able to test him for COVID, uh, we we find that he has IgM antibodies across the board. So mm -hmm. we know in December, that's what he had. Again, the, the clinical scenario correlates with the antibodies. So influenza A, influenza B, very different test. And it should be done all together, by the way. You know, yes. if someone has those symptoms, they should be checked for all of those. Oh, that's, that's a good point. And um, you mentioned the flu vaccine. Does that help with um, creating any sort of um, enhanced immune response to COVID? Is there any correlation whatsoever? No, we don't think so. It's very different. Uh, of course, we, we've not studied it. You know, COVID's a new beast, uh, new virus, uh, but we wouldn't, we wouldn't have any reason to suspect that uh, at all. So I wouldn't have people think, but what you do see with the flu vaccine, I mean, many people die of flu. Yeah. And it, right there are thousands and thousands of deaths, uh, but it goes back to that analogy I was using before. If you have a flame that's jumping from tree to tree or matchstick to matchstick, and then all of a sudden someone has antibodies, it stops there. And with flu, we have enough people. We have a lot of times what we'll call herd immunity, mm -hmm. really based on the vaccine. So fortunately, in many communities. Um, I know here in La Jolla, uh, we don't see that much flu. We have yeah. very little flu. Um, let's talk about supplements. I know that's something that you also recommend. And of course, everyone needs to consult with their individual medical practitioner to make right. sure that, um, it works for them. But as general guidelines, what do you recommend to your patients as uh, immunity boosting? Right. So again, we always say a supplement is a supplement to lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. It's a supplement to a good night's sleep, diet, laughter, joy, doing things, playing, doing things that um, are good for the immune system in your life uh, and right eating and so on. Um, but there are some tried and true supplements, particularly some that have even come out of um, 
the traditional Chinese medicine side where, where this has been studied for a while. So what we did at Pacific Curl is instead of having people take uh, tons of different bottles of things is we created a, um, we took what we think are best to keep inflammation down. We looked at what the research was on uh, antivirals, things like astralagus and quercetin and mush immune support mushrooms. Uh, we made some of our own formulas, plus uh, we, we are blessed to have very, very uh, wonderful naturopathic doctors. So we've been able to use raw herbs to make tinctures for people uh, mm -hmm. when they need them. So uh, again, a blanket prescription, there's good research on astrologists, on, on, on viruses in general. I'm not just talking, COVID, nobody knows COVID-19, right? But on viruses in general, if you, you know, things like andrographis and astralagus and vitamin C and zinc and in the right combinations and right dosings can help support, we say to support the immune system. And again, a healthy, why does, you know, you can have three people in a room and everyone gets exposed to the same cold virus, right? And this mm -hmm. has been studied. And uh, people actually did this in a research study where they had the rhinovirus, cold virus, put in their nose. Not everyone got the common cold. Why? Mm -hmm because some people had stronger immune systems than others. And really lifestyle and nutrient support is what keeps the immune system strong. For people in La Jolla uh, and people who can get to our center, we've actually been doing IV immune boosting. I mean, I myself have been having an IV every 10 days or so. I'm seeing patients. I want to keep my immune system yeah, strong. Of and I'm do I'm going. Uh, I said I'm going to mainline my supplements. Uh, and I'm a firm believer that if we have the right nutrients, we have the best fuel for fighting. Yeah. So right. Yeah. You lay the good foundation. We have a question here, and I know you need to go see your patients. Wrap up pretty okay. soon. Um, do we know yet if we will have immunity after having COVID? Uh, there's a good chance you will. Most healthy immune systems will make antibodies to the uh, virus. Uh, and uh, again, that can be tested. That's where the serologic blood testing comes in. Finger stick testing uh, is coming online very quickly. So um, there's a good chance if you're otherwise healthy, uh, you will mount a good vi a response. And let me add one thing. You know, a brilliant researcher, Dr. Kleekot Glazer, she, she's a brilliant researcher. And what she did was she gave vaccines to medical students during exam week mm -hmm. and during vacation. And guess what? During vacation, they made all the antibodies to the vaccine during exam week, not so, because their body was under so much stress, Yeah, right? And same thing, study the flu vaccine. Flu vaccine to people under stress, they didn't mount the antibodies. So uh, again, going back to this, you know, how do we keep, our, keep ourselves uh, resilient? How do we keep ourselves uh, strong, both emotionally, mentally, spiritually, as well as physically. As we wrap up, Dr. Guineri, um, what resources can we use uh, that, you know, you said pay, don't watch so much of the news, but there are great resources out there. What would you recommend? What would you recommend in the way of where a good, good resources um, that we can um, get information from and how can we find you? Well, you know, the CDC is a good resource in general. The World Health Organization is a great resource. The Johns Hopkins newsletter, particularly for clinicians, has been a great resource. Uh, these are all out there, readily available. Uh, we can be reached at 858-459-6919. Our website is pacificpearllahoya.com. Uh, we've put together a series of... Um, uh, lectures that people can listen to, sort of, you know, short snippets of here's 10 minutes on antibodies, this is, you know, uh, things like that. So uh, we're happy to help people. 
Great, thank you. And when do you think this is gonna be behind us? If you were to make you make some predictions, when are we gonna move on to just not talking about COVID? I think we're gonna move on when we have a vaccine mm -hmm. or when we have herd immunity. Yeah. I think COVID will get quiet, uh, I, particularly on the West Coast in California. I think by June, it's going to get quiet, mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't mean it's gone. Mm -hmm. Right, and so it's sort of like flu it gets quiet and then reappears. Uh, only when this reappears, it reappears with uh, pretty devastating consequences in certain people. Yeah. So um, I think ultimately uh, we need that vaccine, or we need full bore herd immunity mm -hmm. before we can say this is behind us, and and that could be two years. Yeah, it's it, that both of those things will take a long time. That's for mm -hmm. certain. It is so good to see you, um, um, and I wish you well, and thank you for doing your continued good work in the community and for all of us, and stay healthy and be well. You too. Thank you for having me. All right. See you soon. Bye-bye. Sure. Bye. -bye. Bye.